Welcome back to Arise Prime Time. I'm Charles Zinni Gordon. Now let's consider all that you've heard on this program today with our down the middle analyst who is with me for the rest of the show. And she is the journalist, political commentator, and Arise News analyst, Dr. Constance Igoku. Good to see you, Constance. Good to see you too. Good evening. Um, let's start with Ankeo Briggs. Um, very forthright, um, very impressive in the way she assessed the problems in uh, River State. What, what is your assessment of what she said? Well, um, she had an excellent explanation of what is currently going on in her home state. I mean, she is a major figure and a major player in mm. River State. Um, it's her home base and she has a lot of information and, and a deep understanding of the state. So it was very good to listen to her. Um, but then ger generally, when you look at what's happening in River State, you have to say that um, the, one of the reasons why we're seeing this is that the political culture of thuggery and brigandage has taken hold in our society. Mm. And that's why people will do these kind of things. And then you look at the fact that um, nobody, almost nobody seems to be calling them to other. It's like bad behavior is being egged on by some mm. with dreadful consequences for the citizens of River State. I mean, we're already seeing the ramifications. The State House of Assembly, the complex, exploded. And now they have to bring the whole building down because of the structural defect. Mm. It's unsafe to go in there. You have to use taxpayers' money to rebuild the entire thing, and it was not necessary if the political figures were not fighting with one another. This is part of the consequences of bad behavior. Mm. And then I like that she also mentioned the federal government. So there is a federal angle to this. People are looking at watching what the president will do. And you know, it's, it's, it's a slippery slope, and it's a delicate situation. And the president also has some have said needs to be careful. This is a highly volatile region, a highly volatile state, and it is strategic to the economy of Nigeria. It is also a region where militancy had in the past totally crippled the country. Mm. Um, with the economic challenges that the president has currently, you really do not need this kind of problem. So you want to handle it very carefully. Yeah, because as she said, the Niger Delta could potentially be a real flashpoint. And it always goes to the nerve center of this country, which is the economy, isn't it? It does. You know, we are still dependent highly on oil for mm. our revenue. And most of the oil comes from that region. But even politically, um, apart from the economy, you don't want that kind of instability. When there's so much uncertainty, uh, it kind of spreads to other regions and when there's a poli policy gridlock within the state, mm. it affects every other thing and the general uh, well-being. I was talking to some people in River State during the day to get a sense of what was happening. And what I hear is that generally people think that um, Yisom Wike is a little bit problematic. He foisted the governor on the state, and less than seven months, he wants him out. So people want some level of peace. Why do we have to go to flames because of the ambition of one man? So Ankyo Briggs was correct when she said that the sentiments are heavily in favor of Sim Fubara. Mm. Not necessarily because he's a fantastic person, but you know, you have to wonder why less than seven months you want to burn the whole house down mm. because of the ambition of one man. Yeah, that's a good point. And uh, Debo Olaguaba, who is a lawyer, he's also a PDP uh, National Publicity Secretary, making clear that the real issue here is constitutional, the defection of the 25 now um, lawmakers, and that once they carpet cross, as, as the constitution affects the um, legislature, then automatically they, are, um, they will have to relinquish their seats. But then there is that provision that if there is division within the party, you can cross to another party. And, and that would be almost like a legal thing to be determined by a court, probably. Well, he did a good job explaining the mm. details going step by step and blow by blow. And, you know, so it was very easy to understand where he was coming from. And you can also sense that he was very measured 
And he seemed mm. like a reasonable human being, but even the party, I think that the, the People's Democratic Party has a lot of reasonable, reasonable people within them. Um, yes, there is that you know, small element that the party is not in crisis at the national level. So these ones you know, have gotten into trouble. And he, like he said, two people have walked back because obviously they have looked at the entire situation and said, oh boy, mm. we might be in big trouble, so let's come we back. We may lose our seats, Ex Exactly. Basically. So yeah. Sim Fubara is fighting for his political life because five uh, members of assembly, I think it's even four, one is Labour Party, the four is PDP. So he is relying on the Esparte order by the, uh, the High Court, mm. which has recognized his own faction of the state assembly. And so, of course, they've now declared the seats vacant and elections are going to hold. This uh, crisis or drama is not finished yet. Anything is possible in Nigeria. Yes, they have declared the seats vacant. They're going to run elections. We don't know what is going to happen. So we're going to see and it's unfolding. But, you know, it is such... A, an unfortunate situation and tragic for the people of River State. I hear some elders are having meetings today and they will be declaring their position by tomorrow. So people need to speak up more. Indeed. I want to thank you very much indeed. Dr. Konstantin Koku is the journalist, political commentator and Arise News analyst. Thank you. You're welcome. That's it for this edition of Arise Prime Time. Join us again tomorrow from me and the entire team here in Abuja. Bye-bye and thank you for watching.